Question number 12, the Honourable Leanne Dalzell. Mr Speaker, my question is to the Prime Minister and asks, does he stand by all his statements? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, yes. The Honourable Leanne Dalzell. Is it fair that his government is only offering to acquire land from owners of insured commercial premises and owners of bare sections at 50 per cent of the rating valuation, when he said 100 per cent was a fair offer to insured homeowners in those areas, even when they were losing tens of thousands of dollars? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Uh, Mr Speaker, yes. I, mean, I think in terms of commercial properties, they are entitled to nothing, so the government is actually stepping up and giving them a lot more. In the case of residential homeowners, uh, um, the government has been exceedingly generous, and the reason it's done that is to try and recognise the plight uh, that people were in in Christchurch. The Honourable Leanne Dalzell. How is it fair that his government is offering to buy out central city property owners for less than half the value of the land, leaving them with insufficient funds to re-establish their business elsewhere, under the threat of compulsory acquisition and holding up the funds for at least another 12 months? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, well, the advice I've had from the Minister is that uh, they are um, looking at all of these properties. They've done the best they can to come up with a proposal that's fair on the valuations, but in principle there is always the risk that some people will be left uh, worse off. That is a statement of fact because of the situation that they find themselves in Christchurch. But the Government, I think, cannot be accused of being uh, cheap when it comes to Christchurch. We have put in billions and billions of dollars to support Cantabrians. Clear Mr Speaker, to the Prime Minister, in regards to his statement on Monday on Kiwi Rail that when, quote, the board informed us of the likely intention to close Hillside, we pushed back reasonably strongly and asked them to fully examine their decision, end quote. What specific actions did he or his ministers take to push back against the Kiwi Rail Board. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, um, I remember being in the meeting, I can't exactly tell the member the date, uh, with the Chairman of um, Kiwi Rail. They came in and the Chief Executive, they gave us an early indication that it was likely that they wouldn't find a sale for the part of Kiwi Rail um, hillside, not, um, not the foundry, but the other part of the business. We said to them there would be significant implications clearly for those people. Uh, there were uh, real issues for those families. We asked them to go back one more time and have a very good look at the situation. The Absolutely sure. Um, in principle, we tried to do whatever we could. The advice we got from Kiwi Rail in the end was, if we wanted to keep Hillside going, then we actually ended up ha would have to end up making a subsidy payment on the back of that. Claire Curran. When he said on Monday that the only way to keep Hillside going was for the government to financially compensate Kiwi Rail, how much compensation would have been required to build wagons at Hillside? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I don't have the exact number, but it's millions of dollars. The Speaker. Honourable Damien O'Connor. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, to the Prime Minister, does he stand by his commitment to the families of the Pike River miners that recovery of the miners' bodies would remain, quote, an absolute priority and, quote, it's not an issue of money? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, that's absolutely right. Um, the member may or may not be aware that I'm writing back to Bernie Monk. Uh, I'll be doing that. I'm visiting the uh, West Coast next week on the 13th. The letter, which no doubt finds its way into the public domain, also goes to all of the families. It's, it spells out what the government is prepared to do and all of the risks that are there, but it also summarises the very substantial risks that have been identified going into the main workings of the mine. It references back to Professor Galvin and the comments that he has made in the Royal Commission's report, which goes on to say, irrelevant of the spending of any amount of money, the risks of going into that mine are, are very substantial. That member should know that if more people get killed on the West Coast going into the main workings of the Pike River mine, that would be an utter travesty, and I'm surprised he is supporting that when he himself knows the risks. The Honourable Damon O'Connor. Will that Prime Minister honour his commitment to do everything possible, and will he commit to recover the drift of the Pike River mine that is, by all accounts and the advice of <coughs> the three independent experts, quite achievable, quite possible and quite safe? 
The Right Honourable Prime Minister. It would be quite wrong of me to give the member that information before it's communicated to Mr Monk and the families, but I can tell the member that in the letter the government's position is very clearly spelt out. Secondly, I can tell the member that I will be sleeping very peacefully tonight with the uh, commitments that I've made. And I go back to the final point, which is that in relation to the main workings of the mine, all of the advice we have received is that it is a very, very substantial risk. If the member goes and looks at that letter, I'm not spinning it. The member's actually doing what's right for the health of people. If that member wants to kill people going in the order, mine, no, no, he should order, carry order, on that way. Order. Point, order. No order, I'm on my feet. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Order. Well, member, wait a moment till the House settles down. This is a tense issue, but... We can't have that kind of exchange. The Honourable Damon O'Connor, point, point of order. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, I was very careful with my question. I appreciate the Prime Minister's answer on this. I was asking in relation to the drift, and, and if the Prime Minister could answer the question when, that would satisfy my request. I accept, I accept the Member's point. He did ask specifically in relation to the drift. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Point, speaking point oh, point I was order. quite clear my answer. I can give the Member an answer. I have an answer. I won't give the Member an answer. And the reason I won't give him an answer is the answer is spelled out in the letter to Bernie Monk and the families, and surely that Member can understand that those families order, no, deserve order, to order. be the, the Prime Minister must not say that under a point of order. This was under a point of order, not further answer. And I think, though, he has explained why he uh, can't answer that part of the question, and I must accept that as Speaker. That brings to a close questions for oral answer today. Would some honourable member care to move that the House take note of miscellaneous business? The Honourable Billings.